Okay, I want to tell you about Gauss's Law and coaxial cables. Coaxial cables, that means that um, there's, there's two cylinders or a wire and another cylinder that are on the same axis. They're coaxial. They have the same axis. This is a coaxial uh, cable. You know, you use them all the time. That's what you might hook up your television set to to get cable television. That's a coaxial cable. Um, you can't see this very well on here um, because it's so it's so small but there's a, a wire coming in here there's a wire there and then uh, that goes that runs through the center of this this wire and then there's um, another cylindrical wire that's that goes around the edge and so um, you can run current up and down here or charge it charge it up and and um, look at the fields now we're going to say there's air between the center wire and the and the outer wire but um, really there's some plastic or something that's how they are able to keep it from um, from the the two from touching it'd be really tough to do if there wasn't plastic there also we're going to assume the cable is incredibly long but it turns out that you know uh, the, the the approximation you get when you when you don't make it that long when you make it say this long it's almost dead on with the um, the the equation when you assume it's long it's kind of like the simple pendulum a simple pendulum the equation um, has an approximation in it but it's pretty close to being right on all right so here's a coaxial cable and um, we're going to say that this has um, a linear charge density of lambda. Lambda is the charge per length. And so um, here's the wire going this way, and it's got a linear charge density of lambda. And then um, there's some air here. This is air in, right here. And then if you go out to um, A, that's the inner radius of the outer uh, cylindrical shell. So this is a cylindrical shell wrapping around. It's kind of tough to get these, just the setup in your mind, but this is metal and it's got some thickness. See how it, it runs from A to B, B being the outer wall of, it, of this cylindrical shell. Okay, and so um, let's see, there's a few things that they're gonna ask us to do. They're gonna ask us to find the electric field at say this point. They're going to want to know the electric field inside the metal. They're going to want to know the electric field out here. They're also going to want to know what the charge per length is for the inner surface, the, the lambda for the inner surface, and the lambda for the outer surface. Let's assume that the um, net charge on the, on the outer, on this, on this um, shell, the cylindrical shell, is, is zero. So there is no net charge on the outer shell, let's say. Okay, so um, let's let's figure out then how you'd get the electric field, um, say right here, the electric field at um, R. We want to go um, where R is is less than B. So I want to find the electric field. That's a colon colon where um, R is less than where R is less than A rather. So R is less than A. Okay, so that would be this, this is R. That's lowercase r. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a Gaussian cylinder. And it turns out that there's two ways to find the flux through here. Um, one way is just to get the charge enclosed. Well, the charge enclosed, over epsilon naught, that's one way to do it. Another way is to um, do find the flux is to find the E dot DAs for every point on the surface. Okay, well, the electric field here is gonna go from, if this is a positive charge per length, and, I'm, and we're assuming that it is, then the, uh, then the field lines look like this. They're radially outward, cylindrical though but they they go out, they branch out like that. And so there is no flux through the top and the bottom of the cylinder. There's just flux out the sides. 
And so um, let's see, the total charge enclosed, if I call the height of this Gaussian cylinder H, the total charge enclosed would be um, just how much lambda, how much charge we have per length times the length. So it would be the, um, pardon me, it would be lambda times H. That is the total charge enclosed. When you multiply this quantity by a, a length, you the, the lengths cancel and you just get Q. Okay, now um, we can get rid of the dot product here on this side because the E and the DAs are always in the same direction. And um, I can pull the E out of the integral because it's the same at every location on here. Why would we expect E to be bigger here than here than here than here? It should be the same. And so when I do that, it's just going to say sum up all the DAs. And if I sum up all these DAs, that would be like cutting this and rolling it out. That's the area of the sides. And the area of the sides is going to be 2 pi r times h. Yeah, if I rolled this out, it might look something like this. And all these DAs, see all these little DAs? When I add them all up, I just get 2 pi r h. Okay, so we can, we can cancel h out of there. And so the electric field inside is going to be um, lambda over 2 pi r epsilon naught. Okay. Okay, what about um, in here? What about the electric field in here? Well, that's a metal. So this is metal. So any metal that's in electrostatic equilibrium has to be equal to the electric field has to be zero in there. So E where um, R is greater than A, R is greater than A, but it's less than B. The E is going to be, um, the E will equal zero. Now, I'm not using Gauss's law to get that done. I'm just I'm just saying that um, it's that's a, a metal, and and if it weren't zero, if the E were something other than zero, the charges would be moving around. So that's not electrostatic equilibrium, and so um, so that's that's how you how you solve that. There's not not much to solve. All right. So um, the next thing is. Um, now we want to get the outside. So what would be the outside? Well, there's no net charge on this thing. And so the outside, if I wanted to know the field there, I'm just going to put a Gaussian surface here. A cylinder. Like such. And with that cylinder, um, there's no flux on the out the top the top and the bottom, but um, you know what um, the net charge enclosed is going to be again. There's no net charge on this on this outside cable, so the net charge enclosed is going to be um, just again lambda h. It's just this charge, this charge that's in here. So if you want to get that, the e um, when you're outside is going to be um, lambda h over epsilon naught is equal to, uh, I can get rid of the dot product because E and DA are in the same direction. And when I do that, uh, I can pull the E out of the integral because the E is the same at every spot on here. It's the same at every spot on the Gaussian surface. So this just turns into E times 2 pi r h again different R, it's a bigger R, but um, the H's cancel. And I get the same equation as this up here. Okay, I'm going to have to break this into two videos, so um, we'll see you in the next video.